Welcome back to Last Clone and what should be the final episode for Bomberman. There is going to be more to do and maybe someday I'll get back to that. Probably not. Uh, tomorrow I'm heading out to Arizona for two weeks so I've just tried to rush these last few videos so I have something to edit and upload while I'm out. The things I will be skipping are just some of the extra bonus stuff where after you kill everybody if you walk the perimeter you can get an extra like 20,000 points and if you destroy all of the enemies in seven bombs you get an extra amount of points. Those aren't uh, I guess the perimeter one would be kind of interesting to teach. Um, counting how many bombs you have versus how many enemies are out there, not very tough. I just don't feel like doing it. So we're going to fix a couple of the weird things that were giving me an issue with the last one and add the last few features we have and finish Bomberman. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got a more ambitious project for the next one. I, I think I want to tackle something on the Super Nintendo. And I've been really wanting to make Super Ghouls and Ghosts, so hopefully I can sort my life out enough to work on that one next. But for now, Bomba Man, let's go. Alright, we had one little bug that gives us a pretty simple fix. Um, when we run out of time, so system, step. Uh, when we run out of time, uh, right here we were checking a place meeting uh, to check where the walls were, and then from there try to fix everything. So when the Pontins uh, spawned, they were spawning inside of the walls and bricks, and that seems a little bit silly here. I think the issue is that we don't have a sprite, so we don't have a, a collision mask for this guy, and we're checking for place meeting, but if we switch this on over to a position meeting, spelled correctly, sure, fine. So that one's done. Um, on stage complete, when we hit this door, we were winning the game, but we were not increasing our lives. So system dot is it I mean it's lives total plus plus that should yeah that'll only run once um bang so there's two things we were missing the player was not able to die from getting touched so we could add a collision event the correct thing that should have been done here so if y'all want to optimize it later on um we should have just one enemy, uh, base enemy, that everything else is a child of, and then the differences between them will go from there. Right now, the only differences I have are in the points. Uh, I think the pawn's supposed to move a little bit faster, but I, I didn't actually see anything on their particular speed, so they're just going to be the same thing, different point values. Okay, again, we're only doing the first stage, so you get more diverse enemies if you play on more of the games. That didn't make sense, but I think it made sense. Um, yeah, so... If we just had a parent object, then we could just check our collisions with that. We're just going to do some or statements, and that'll be it. So here we have if we are touching the blast. Uh, so I'm going to say or. Uh, let's go to, uh, so position meeting. Why am I running position meeting with the blast? That's weird. I should have been doing place meeting. We'll see how that works. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so we'll see if, if, it, if it fucks with us. I'm just going to do places for now. Oh, it is hot in this room. I can't have the fan on because it wiggles the green screen. Wait, I can point it the other way. All right. So I really wish we could just do like an or inside of here. So always check the X, Y, and then just give it an array of places. I could write that. I'm not going to write that. But let's go X, Y. Did I go little face? I thought I PTSD from that. Um, object enemy because that's what we call bloom. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a shkupupu and boopu. And then here we have O'Neill Sin. And then here we have Mr. Pond. So if we touch any of them things, then the same thing happens. We die. Now it should be easy enough. And one more off our damn list. Damn, before hitting play, I think I could have done the last thing there is. Oh, I added these things back to being colored. Um, I had, I played one round and it was silly because I uh, well, I just wanted to check, make sure I don't. Okay, that's why I had position. Something silly with that, and I don't get it because I thought the issue was with rotating the. Mm, it is with rotating the things. So, fuck, this could still mess with me. The issue is that the collision mask in, for the, the blast isn't where we're drawing it. Um, so I can change it a few different ways. But, like, I'll, I'll try to demonstrate it a little bit later. Um, yeah, so, bang in. I just want to make that I, 
I still live in all of the other directions if I'm just one without oh, swimming. If I'm just one away from it. Good. So then if I'm on it, I definitely die. If I'm here, I definitely die. Uh, okay, those that, that, that's pretty much. And I okay, good. Death is done, position is needed for that. But with this guy, we want place. Now, I do want I don't think I need Yeah, so we're gonna change only one one collision mask. Ah, what is he at? He's full. Let's make him just automatic. It gives us a little bit of running space. Uh, let's do the same for these. So bloom collision mask. Oh, his is automatic, and it's a full fucking thing. Well, he's pretty much the full fucking thing. Um, then let's do manual. Come in to to uh, thirteen thirteen. Got to make the game a little bit easier for ourselves. O'Neill, we'll see what his is at. Uh, collision mask. Yeah, so manual one two two thirteen thirteen Ponton. He actually might give us a better uh nope, never mind. A manual two two thirteen thirteen. Alright. So that's just the uh the collision won't be as annoying. Um you'll feel like you get away. The blast, the reason that we're having an issue with that one is the sprite is the sprite, oh well, come on, I have so much things. Um, the sprite is centered. Everything else we have pinned up here, but we're still spawning it to that same location. We are then rotating it and then drawing it shifted back down. It's a little bit silly on my part. I could have just shifted it here and then had us shift it when we draw the, the object, but I didn't do it that way. I shifted it with a variable, and uh, now we have to deal with it. So you can think if there's like four squares, like here, here, we're gonna, that doesn't really help me, does it? We're gonna do this. Boop. Boop. Um, was it four by four? Oh, you suck. White. Alright. Um, so, what I'm saying essentially is the collision mask is typically drawn on the entire square that that the, the image is on, but we didn't do that. We're actually drawing the image um, up here. Well, we're setting the image up here, and then we are rotating it. We'll do that for rotating. And then we are uh, drawing a new picture of it over here. This is with our X and our Y offsets. So we're rotating in place, and then we're shifting it that way. These arrows are terrible. Um, so what that means is our collision mask is still up here, and it's still touching if we are to the side of it. That's why when the bomb came out and ended, and I still died in empty, side, uh, empty space. Uh, the collision mask still exists all over. So we're just going to ignore that by only checking if we are on this little point, um, which I can't even I can't even put a dot on that point, just in, in the center of this square. If you're at the origin, if we check with the position meeting, then we're going to check for that overlap, and we don't have to worry about the mistake I made with shifting everything off. Oh, well, that makes sense. How many times can I say that in a tutorial? I wanted to increase the bomb time. Because this guy just seems to explode too fast. Oh, that's because I had moved it. That's only one second now. Uh, two seconds. No, that's only one second. They weren't at 60. We'll, we'll double it. Oops. Uh, just play that real fast. Feel it. Oh, that's going to suck. All right. We learned. All right, so we have the timer. We have the score. We have number of lives, those all work. Let's get rid of that colored in shindig. This time I did it in our system event. Uh, the room start, when we created the, the bricks, I just changed their image blend. There, so now those aren't colored in. Um, really strange though, one map, they just it, it didn't show up at the door and I checked the whole map and broke all the blocks and I haven't changed anything, but I've played several levels since and it, the door is always there, so no idea. Not gonna question it. We're just we're good. Um, bomb time is increased. We're getting death by touches. We're getting extra life. We fix punt spawn. 
uh, which that position meeting that was I th that was actually not the same mistake. No, no, the position meeting mistake was because the system object doesn't have a collision mask, so similar mistake. Uh, that's this is that it? Can we go pick face? Well, I guess we can. Hell yeah! So the again the only things that are left and. Feel free to try this. I would actually, this would be awesome if anybody did. If you try to do these and you have any problems and you ask me on specifics of those problems for the new features, that would be neat. I'd love to help out with it. Uh, if enough people ask, I will, after this little adventure in Arizona, I can uh, work on a video for the little bonus steps. Um, but yes, the things were meaning. If you destroy all of the, the balloons with seven bombs, then you, you don't think you need to expose the door. I think you just need to kill all of them. Then, uh, you, know, you get some amount of points. If you kill all of the blooms, maybe in your seven bombs, and then you run the perimeter, which you wouldn't be able to do because you would need, ah, no, because you could use the bombs after you kill those with the seven. It all worked. So get that, then run the perimeter, and uh, uh, you unlock a little thing, a little blue icon, looks like a sphinx head, that gives you like 20,000 points. And there was another score thing that I didn't do. You know what? No, that's all that we're going to do. Let's, uh,. That's Bomberman. I guess I had an idea for the perimeter, so I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Anyone who wants to stick around and, and do that. I need just a sprite. Give me a sprite. Create. Give me sprite. Edit this sprite. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Make that null. And then we're going to do a boop. And then do boop. Okay. So this is actually a good size grid. So we have too much things going on. Oops. Oops. Okay. So for for the um, the perimeter bonus, like if if you Google what they are, you'll you'll be able to find the things. Uh, it looks like a little blue sphinx head. Am I big face? I am. Haha. -ha, good catch. Okay. Um. The objective to get the t extra twenty thousand points is you have to after. I mean the door after killing all the balloons. So kill all of them. There's some amount of them in the map. You then walk the entire perimeter. I said that fucking weird. You walk the entire perimeter of the map. So you have to blow up all the bombs along the way. And then when you finish that loop, you get this the little icon up here. So I played it on the emulator on in a browser and it worked. Um, so I, I thought in my head how to calculate that you walked all the way around the steps. Now. The original game could do it several different ways. They could just be running a check to see to make sure, that, like by the time all the pawns are dead, if all of these spaces have been touched, then it just gives you the award. I don't know. I don't know if you have to walk the perimeter. Uh, my idea was, any time my player is walking, um, he turns off in whatever direction. So if he's walking right and then turn, or walking to the right and then turns right from that, fuck it, we're gonna change perspective. If he's walking up, and then he turns right at a point in which there's a turn. I would start recording there. Um, it, you could, and I would record how many steps there are like at that, so we're not gonna be counting these steps. So the point is a step. So I would count the next one, I would count the next one, I would count the next one. When the, I, I'm not gonna necessarily, I guess I would have to check if you're going horizontal that you've done enough steps. I don't think so though. Um, no, no, you should. So now from here, when you, you're you not doing anything other than adding one when you walk another space. When you turn, if it's in that same direction, you're going to include it and you're going to keep going uh, where you're just counting until you're turning. If you turn in a different direction, say if there were more more spaces here and you turned uh, left, then we would count that as the, the new starting point. It would it would break this whole count. So we're assuming that we've, we've made a unique turn and now anytime we've emulated that, that turn, we're going to continue to count them. After doing that, if you get any point where you've successfully turned three times, that is the only way in which you can get back to uh, a, a total of the perimeter of squares. We have, I think, Fuck. I think it's like 13 by 9. I have no idea how big the game board is. But to get to all the the perimeter spaces while turning, the only way to do that is if you have those one, two, three consecutive turns after the initial recording. So if at any point you turn in a different way, you're going to reset the whole thing. If you were to have turned, that's going to be correct, and then turn, that's going to be correct, and you're going to come back, and then you're going to turn again. Um, I guess you would need to count. I guess you just run that limit to always just reset on new turns. And then if step count equals the perimeter number, I think that'd be the only way to do it. Uh, and then if, 
Because if you turn again, that'd be a fifth turn. You wouldn't. You'd want to reset it as well. Well, silly little suggestions. I don't know if I'll keep this in the video. That's if you want to just play around and make the little bonus. I might do when I get back. <laughs> but that will be all. I will at some point soon go through this code and add a bunch of comments and clean it up a bit and put up the source code on probably on my Patreon. And yeah, Bomberman, you know how to make it now. If you make any type of games based off of this tutorial, I would love to see it. I've seen a few of you guys' games, and it's just really fun to see. It's encouraging. I get some great comments suggesting that I'm actually helping with this, and that feels good. So let me know what projects you make. I'd love to see them. You can see me later.